What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of Tevin Jenkins, who had a monster game against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, to me, this guy is definitely one of the best guards in the NFL. And it's not close. The guy is an absolute monster. Now, he obviously made the transition from left guard to right guard about three weeks back. And he's continuing to play right guard next to Darnell Wright. And I would argue that when you look at the guard tackle combos in the NFL, this is one of the best in the league. Look at Tevin Jenkins get physical here with number 93. Great contact. Powerful. And look at him crush 93. And look at him take 93 and put his ass into the ground. To me, this is what Tevin Jenkins was doing the entirety of this game against the Saints. He was dominating. And he was actually graded as one of the best guards in the NFL in Week 9. And today we're going to analyze his tape. We'll also get into a couple of the other guys. Braxton Jones is officially back. Let's get right into this film breakdown. Check this play out. Tevin Jenkins is going to have a cutoff block on number 20. Pete Warner, the inside linebacker. And Jenkins takes a really, really nice angle. Now, technically, the play is only going to pick up about one yard. But this play right here shows why Tevin Jenkins is such a good offensive lineman. For him to be able to take this wide angle here to try to cut off Pete Warner is impressive. Keep in mind, look at Warner's right foot and kind of where it's at rel relative to the foot here of Tevin Jenkins. Jenkins has a very difficult reach block. So as soon as Tevin Jenkins gets out of his stance, you're going to see that the inside linebacker is going to be able to recognize kind of where the football is. He's going to flow and you're going to see Jenkins still be able to get there and make really, really nice contact with this inside linebacker. That's a great job being able to make contact with this guy and kind of just push him out of there. In my opinion, if number 85 Cole Komet was able to do a better job on the defensive end, the play could have popped. Not a big deal. Did want to just recognize Tevin Jenkins angle that he takes on this play. Let's get into the next snap. Check the play out. You're going to get a double team here by Tevin Jenkins and Darnell Wright. They're going to block 93. Jenkins is going to release up to the inside linebacker. And why Jenkins clear the way on this one? A really, really solid job by Jenkins. Absolutely beautiful job being able to read and recognize this play. It looks like it's some sort of duo concept, which means the two are going to double team there up to the inside linebacker. The two guys here are going to double team up to this linebacker. And as soon as Warner steps over here towards the right, Jenkins is going to release, get this guy the hell up out of there, which is a really powerful ass rep. Now you can tell this is a powerful ass rep by Jenkins. Look at the contact he makes with number 20. Not a massive lane, but look at as he makes contact, how much he moves number 20 out of that gap. Look at that. Look at the, the gap that he's ultimately going to be able to create. It's really, really nice job right there by Tevin Jenkins. Powerful. This one picked up eight yards. So that's a really nice job. Let's get into the next snap. You got a second and 15, and the quarterback's actually going to throw an interception on this one. Uh, to me, the quarterback cannot do this. I mean, this is just, this is bad. This is bad football right here because at the end of the day, the offensive line really kept the quarterback clean. They did a really nice job giving the quarterback as much time as he needed. It was only a three-man rush, but this is what you would expect when there are only three guys. Right, the quarterback had all day to ultimately throw this pass, and he's still going to end up throwing the interception. That one's not acceptable. It's 100% on Tyson Bajant. Not a big deal. I think Justin Fields will come back this week, hopefully. And if he is back, I don't think he makes these type of passes. Right, Fields has been in the league longer. He's more of a veteran than Bajant is at this point. Not a big deal, but I did want to point it out. It's a bad read. Good job by the online, though. Let's get into the next snap. Check this play out. You're going to get a play action towards the bottom of your screen. The quarterback's going to ultimately roll towards the top. But when you get a play action to the bottom, that means these guys are all going to basically flow downwards. And keep an eye on Tevin Jenkins. You're not going to want to miss this one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rep. Look at this. Look at this. Bam. Absolutely crushes a guy. And you don't even see how far away this guy kind of falls off the screen because he ends up falling off the screen. But... This is the type of power Tevin Jenkins brings. He crushes number 97. You see 97 basically get tossed out of there. That's a beautiful job right there by Jenkins. These are the type of plays that I absolutely love to see. Now, you won't be able to see it from this angle here because it is off camera. But that's a nice job right there by Jenkins being physical. Again, a lot of pancake blocks, a lot of powerful reps. This is part of why I absolutely love this guy. Check this play out. Jenkins is going to do a really, really nice job, but Darnell Wright's not going to be able to get to the block. Uh, and ultimately, Brian Brzee, the rookie defensive tackle, is going to blow the play up. Uh, let's talk about this one a little bit because uh, this is part of the development I need Darnell Wright to make. Now, in this play, you're going to get an out block here. You're going to get a double with the center ultimately getting to the inside of 56. 
You're going to get a double team here by Darnell Wright and Tevin Jenkins. Wright is ultimately supposed to release and get up to number 20. And Darnell Wright has to be able to get to the inside of this defensive tackle. And on this play, Wright is not going to be able to get there. So as you'll see, Tevin Jenkins get the right hand into Brian Brzee. That push right there should be enough for Darnell Wright to get out in front. And he's not able to. You can see right here, he's not able to get in front of Brze, and Brze blows this play up. Uh, but to me, Jenkins does a good job by himself, right? He does help, and then he does set himself up to the inside of number 20. And he does get to his block. And honestly, had it been that one guy that ultimately got cut off here, number 90, this play pops, in my opinion. Now, ultimately, did pick up about five yards anyways. But you can see right here. The center is going to get up to 56. Jenkins has his guy. 94 got ultimately sealed off because of the cut block to the inside. The guy went too far upfield. And number 90 was the only guy that had he been blocked to play pops for more yards in my opinion. Not a terrible job because Jenkins still is able to double team climb. The center does a good job with the seal out block on number 97. And the play still pops for 5 yards so it's not a terrible job. But just wanted to point that one out. Let's get into the next snap. I want to just take a second to talk a little bit about left tackle Braxton Jones. I think he's one of the key players that the Bears really need back. You see plays like this where he's going to double and then he's going to get up to the inside linebacker and seal off the inside linebacker. Of course, this play picks up nine yards. I think this is one of those guys that as he continues to develop, as he stays healthy, and as he gets better, his upside's through the roof. Uh, Braxton Jones was a massive find, in my opinion, by the Bears last season. And again, he's one of those guys that as he continues to develop, and I'm not saying he's there today, he may need two more years to fully develop. But as he continues to develop, the upside for him is through the roof. So I'm glad he's back. I wanted to just point this play out because he does a really nice job reaching and ultimately allowing the offense to pick up about nine yards. Let's get into the next snap. You got another really, really nice block here by Tevin Jenkins. You're going to get a quick screen to the right. Look at Jenkins find the defensive back and absolutely crush him. To me, this is a really, really, really nice shot by Jenkins. This is part of what he brings to the Chicago Bears, right? He's smart. He's really good in space. He will hit you. He will try to kill you if he can. It's a really nice shot. Let's get into the next snap. You got another really, really nice block again by Tevin Jenkins. This one's going to pick up nine yards. Just a beautiful, beautiful job by Jenkins. Uh, now, the average person will look at this snap and say, Tevin Jenkins got put down into the ground. All right, Tevin Jenkins ultimately did not do a good enough job because Tevin Jenkins is the one that was in the ground at the end of this play. But I'm here to tell you guys that is not what happens on this one. In fact, right away, the first thing I notice is the ball snapped from the 35-yard line. Tevin Jenkins is going to make contact at about the 36-yard line. And number 93 is going to end up getting pushed back about three to four yards before he ultimately turns and tries to throw Tevin Jenkins off of himself. And as he turns, he ends up turning the wrong way and the running back picks up nine yards. It's a great block right there by Jenkins. The center does a nice job double teaming as well to really help create that movement. It's a beautiful, beautiful job right there. Let's get into the next snap. You got another really nice block once again. Jenkins is going to put down the rookie defensive tackle. And again, it's all about just being able to push the defensive lineman off the ball. Look at where the ball currently is, and you'll see where this defensive lineman ends up. The defensive lineman ends up about four yards off the ball once again. The movement that Tevin Jenkins helps create is damn impressive. Now, of course, he does get a double team by the center, but Jenkins is still the guy that's really getting underneath these guys, right? He's the one that's really creating the leverage. As he's taking those steps to the left, he's staying tight with the defensive lineman, but he does have the leverage. Of course, the center does push. And ultimately, number 90 is going to get moved out of there. Jenkins puts his ass into the ground. This one picked up five yards. So really nice job once again. Let's get into the next snap. Now, I know there's not a whole lot of pass reps that we're really looking at. A lot of it is run stuff. But do keep in mind, Jenkins did not give up any sacks. He did not give up any pressures or quarterback hits. A lot of his snaps are very, very clean. And part of how he does that is by using what is referred to as a latch and mirror technique. Uh, basically, what he does is with his right hand, he's going to grab on to the shoulder pad, the left shoulder pad, specifically of number 99. And you can see 99 is going to try to break the contact right there. And Jenkins does not let go. He has a really solid latch onto number 99. That's a good job right there with the right hand. Really latches on, does not let 99 break the contact, and he ultimately anchors down. And he wins this rep. And I can show you guys 10 more plays like this, right? 
And we will continue to show you guys the past reps where he really latches or really snatches and traps or whatever it may be from an advanced perspective. But we're not going to get into every single one of his past reps because there's also a lot like this one here, right? Where he ultimately ends up with the three technique where he's double teaming, but he's keeping the eyes out towards number 94 in case the right tackle needs help. There's a lot of snaps like this as well. Let's go ahead and get into the next snap. Check this play out. You got a second and 16 and the Chicago Bears are going to pick up 22 yards on this one. Uh, this was one of the plays that the broadcast crew pointed out a little bit. Uh, they talked about the left guard pulling from the left guard spot over to the right. Uh, Cody White here does a great job on this one, but it's not just White here. Uh, to me, the entire offensive line does, does a really good job. Uh, this play right here is actually called crunch, which is a type of run concept where both guards basically loop around. You get a seal off block by the center, and then both tackles kind of climb up to the inside linebackers here. And you'll leave one defensive lineman kind of unblocked. It's really to attack the inside. And this play works well. The center here does a good job sealing off number 99. Tevin Jenkins does a good job with the front side the end. Cody White here does a great job processing number 90. As well as number 20. This is a hard block for the left tackle. White here not only blocks number 90 downwards. But he's also going to pick up 20. The inside linebacker right there. And that block ultimately allows this play to hit. So that's a really nice job by the left guard. Uh, the entire offensive line, generally speaking, do a pretty good job. This one popped for 22 yards. Watch the independent hands here by Tevin Jenkins. Just a really nice job. Uh, he's going to start with the left punch. He's going to bring the right hand second. Uh, and then he'll come back with another left right. So watch the left hand first. Bam. Lands to number 90's chest. As 90's trying to hit the right side here. Then he's going to bring the right hand second. You see that. Obviously, the goalpost kind of gets in the way. You can see the right hand get thrown right there as well. And then as number 90 is trying to counter that, here comes the second hand. Just a great job using the independent hands. One hand here, one hand there. It's the proper way to ultimately block. Uh, the quarterback is kept clean, and he delivers actually a really nice pass on this one. DJ Moore is not able to bring it in, uh, but this is a pretty nice pass right here. The, the cornerback does a really nice job breaking the pass up. Now, one of the things with the Bears offensive line that I feel like makes it a really good unit is just the amount of time that the quarterback has. And I feel like we've seen this with Justin Fields as well when he was quarterback. Uh, he definitely had time in the pocket. Now, it wasn't always perfect. There were definitely games where he didn't have this type of time. But I feel like, generally speaking, this offensive line has done a pretty solid job. Uh, here's a great example as well. If you guys watch the right tackle first. Look at the right tackle here, punch 94, and absolutely stop him. I love this double hand punch here by Darnell Wright. Gets right into the right tackle and really throws him off balance. It's a powerful ass rep by Darnell Wright. To take it a step further, watch Tevin Jenkins against Brian Brzee one-on-one. -on -one, shuts his ass down as well. Really just stays out in front of him. Uh, you can take it a step further and look at Braxton Jones over at left tackle against a pretty damn good defensive end. And he's going to shut his ass down as well. You know, those three guys right there have the potential to be very, very good offensive linemen. And I would argue that both Darnell Wright and Tevin Jenkins are already both really good offensive linemen. Obviously, Tevin Jenkins is a top five guy at his position. And Darnell Wright isn't there, but you can see the flashes on tape. And I know Braxton Jones might not be a top five guy either, but the guy's a pretty good young offensive tackle and his upside's through the roof. As he continues to develop, as he continues to get stronger, as he just gets better and better and maybe plays 1,500 snaps in the league, the guy is going to continue to develop as well. I have high hopes for this offensive line, and I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that. I've been seeing a ton of offensive line rankings over the past two weeks or so that are actually ranking the Bears as, as one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. I'm seeing Darnell Wright being listed as a top 12 offensive tackle already, and it makes sense. Because he got plays like this where he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a good defensive end and he shuts his ass down. And this happens so much with Darnell Wright. Now, he's not the perfect player yet. He has to continue to improve. He has to continue to get better. Uh, but I think as Nate Davis gets healthy and he starts to play as well as Tevin Jenkins continues to dominate the way he's been doing. Trust me when I say this. This offense line is going to be regarded as one of the best offense lines in the NFL. Ryan Poles has done a really, really solid job. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider subscribing. We'll be doing more Bears offensive line and defensive line content as we go forward. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.